one of the words that really helped me out of my depression was abundance. Abundance and affirmation, you know what I'm saying? Like those two words single-handedly helped me. But I say abundance. Abundance is such a powerful word because abundance is something that we all have. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it could be measured differently, but we all have abundance. You know what I'm saying? We have the abundance of life every day. From the moment that we wake up and we're able to breathe, we're able to walk, we're able to, you know what I'm saying, see, we're able to hear. Like, you know, these are these things are abundance. You know what I mean? Once you can accept that on a day-to-day -day basis, it's like life kind of starts to open up for you. It's like, yeah, you might not have the most money, but you're abundant. Both of you guys are abundant in some area more than me. You know what I mean? And it's like, whatever that area is, it doesn't even matter. The fact is that we are plentiful. You know what I'm saying? And that's the, that's the right foot to step on once you walk out of bed. It's giving thanks for the fact that you have options. You know what I'm saying? You could pick this job or you could pick that job. You could go left or you could go right. You know what I'm saying? That alone is such a great gift. You know what I mean? And once I started to accept that, it was like, wow. Like I reprogrammed my whole subconscious. Um, shout out to Montrealty, you know what I mean? Literally day ones for me. Like, uh, I'm about to go watch the 2012 interview after this, you know what I'm saying? Just to see the fucking contrast, you know what I mean? But uh, shout out to you guys, man. I'm glad that you guys are still around. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I hope we can continue to have these interviews every fucking five years or whenever the fuck, you know? It's, it's a good measure of just my life. Like, I appreciate you guys for even providing me with that, you know, so. I mean, what I'll say is this, like, uh, a lot of the times, right, um, like, it's, it's good to be exact with what you want to manifest, right? And the example that I use is, like, you got to be exact with, your, with, with the universe or with God or, you know, whatever it is that you call in the source, whatever it is that you're connected to, because you don't go to a deli, you don't go to the corner store and say, let me get a sandwich. You know what I mean? He's like, yo, let me get the sandwich with the bacon, some extra cheese, no onions, some pickles, some boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? He's very, so it's good to be specific in your manifesting. However, what I've learned from even being specific is sometimes, you know, it's like, how can I, how can I explain it? It's like if you're fishing, right, and you got this big net, you, your goal might be, oh, I'm gonna catch 13 fish, but you catch 11. You know what I'm saying? It's like, sometimes you gotta accept that um, that's just the way it's meant to be. What is meant for you won't miss you. You know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or whatever misses you wasn't meant for you. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's what I would say I've learned from you know manifesting over the years. There's a lot of things that I may have wanted and you know just because I didn't get it, didn't mean that there was, like, you know, what I found most of the time was that there was something better. You know what I'm saying? I missed that opportunity, but there was something better, like, lying ahead, you know what I mean? So you just gotta, you gotta uh, remain faithful. You know, my new philosophy is, you could look around, you could scan the room, and you could tell who's praying. You know what I'm saying? Because praying is part of manifesting. Praying is, is, is affirmation, you know what I'm saying? It's like, a lot of people, who are frustrated in life, they're not the ones that's praying. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if you're praying every day, what you're doing is you have to allow space for the universe or God or whatever it is that you call it to run its course. You know what I'm saying? If the people who are frustrated, they're more mad that they can't have the whole thing in their control. You know what I'm saying? That's why like prayer is super important. 
and is a, is a vital aspect of manifesting because it's like you're programming your subconscious to think a certain way, to feel a certain way every day. You know what I mean? It's like you're accepting the fact that you're abundant. Even though you don't have the things that you want, you, you may have the things that you need, you know what I'm saying, to get to where you want. You know what I mean? And that just allows for a smooth sailing flow. You don't, you, there's no blocks in the road, you know what I mean? You, you allow for yourself to flow freely, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's just, that's just a few things that I've learned over the years, you know? Like I don't, get, I don't get worked up anymore if I miss a goal or if I miss a check on my list or my goal list, you know what I'm saying? I just look at it like, okay, you know, it just maybe it just wasn't meant to happen this way. But because I stay prayed up, I stay, I stay faithful, you know what I'm saying? Knowing that I'm either gonna get something better or maybe I just need to write a new goal, you know what I mean? Maybe that just wasn't for me, you know, so. Um, well, I wanna manifest this house that I saw today, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it is the house for me. However, I ain't tripping, G-O-D. Like, if I don't get this one, I know it's because you got a better one for me. Like, at this point, I'm on the second one that I thought is for me, so maybe third time's a charm. But either way, I want to manifest the perfect house for me. You know what I'm saying? The perfect plot of land that I could like grow and expand on over the next five to seven years, you know what I mean? That, that, is, that is my number one priority in life right now, like just for my whole personal domain, is like getting this space to call my own, you know what I mean? Like I've been took care of moms years ago, you know what I mean? Mom's good, mom's got a beautiful house that she loves, but now it's my time, you know what I'm saying? So in this Mount Reality interview, you know, um, I look forward to manifesting that crib in like the next one to three months. <laughs> I think um, I definitely look like an older version of myself. Um, I think I still have this glow about me though, because you know I believe that I'm gonna live a long time and God willing, and um, you know I believe that I'm gonna stay healthy. I take care of myself now, um, but I think every day I think I'm farming. You know, I think in the future I get into uh, agriculture a lot. Like, you know, maybe this is the third house now that I'm in, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I still got the first one that I'm talking about in this interview, maybe. But um, I think whatever I'm at on my plot of land, I, I got horses and shit. I'm like, you know, I'm playing with my, my grandchildren or maybe even my great-grandchildren, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, just, Whatever it is, I provided a great space for, you know, myself, my family, my friends to thrive on, and it's a self-sufficient space, you know what I mean? So I think, like, my daily routine will come a little bit from uh, maintaining that, you know what I'm saying? Word up. What's it like being a girl dad? Um, being a sucker, <laughs> like being a sucker for love, word up, because it's just, you know, my daughter knows she could get away with stuff with me, you know what I'm saying? And it's cool, because I let her get away with it. It's like, um, you know, and especially me in the uh, career path that I've taken, um, you know, me having to work unusual hours or, you know what I mean, for days I won't, you know, be able to see her or something like that. Like, when I come around, all I want to do is see a smile on her face. So I'm not even hearing about, oh, she broke this in the house, I don't even care. Like, I'm coming with a gift, I'm coming with a prize, I'm taking her to the prize store. That's what she calls it, like the toy store, she calls it the prize store, it's so funny. But um, yeah, man, it's like, uh, it's definitely a gentle experience. And I've always been a gentle man. But, um, you know, I want to say that it's, it's made me even more gentle. And it's like I look forward to my daughter and I's relationship, like, evolving over time because I look at myself as a very open-minded individual. So I feel like I'll be able to give her, like, a perspective and just a relationship that I wasn't necessarily given, you know, growing up. And, you know, that's no shade to my parents, but um, I just know I'm more open-minded, you know what I'm saying, than, than they were and raising me. So like, I look forward to just the conversations that we'll have and know, and, and you know, establishing the type of relationship with her where she knows that, you know, I'm not judging her. You know what I mean? Like she could talk to me about anything. Like I won't necessarily, like I might be disappointed, but you know, I won't be like necessarily mad at her. I won't make her feel like, you know, um, 
you know, oh, if I tell my dad, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want her to always be able to tell her dad anything. Like, yeah, mommy gonna kill me, but I'm gonna go tell dad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm with that type of relationship. My goal is to, as she's growing up, is to like kind of groom her financially. And just like just on the responsibility level of her understanding, like, you know, just because her dad is famous or her dad is rich or whatever the case may be, like having her understand, um, you know, you got to work for what you want. You got to earn what you want. Nothing in this life is granted. You know what I'm saying? Even when you have a rich family or whatever the case is. Like, you know, it's funny because before I had a child, um, J. Cole had said on my song Legendary, he was like, uh, I think the line is like, pretty much like the toughest thing is to, is for a rich man to teach humble, humbleness to his seed. You know what I mean? And that's that hits me every year that she gets older. It's like, word, it's like, what is gonna be my approach with that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Once it starts to hit her, because right now she already kind of understands that like her dad is something, you know what I mean? Like, you know, people will come by the house, like the other day, uh, my mom was babysitting her at, uh, at her house and, uh, you know, she had a plumber, like a, a plumbing team come there because whatever, it was like a leak. And I happened to walk in, like, you know, this is just one of the, I don't live with my mom, but this is just one of the days I came over. And as soon as I walked in, the plumber dude is like, no way. You know what I'm saying? It, just, it caught me off guard too, cause I'm like, oh shit, like he's in my crib, he knows where I live and shit. I'm like, my, get the NDAs ready, like, you know what I'm saying? But um, after that, like, you know, I had, I had to leave, I had to, uh, I had to go see some more houses or whatever. Um, you know, like like uh, the plumber, he was having a cover with my mom. Like, oh, that's your son. Boom, boom, boom. And then my daughter was there. She was like, you know my daddy? And he's like, yeah, I'm a fan. And she was just looking at him like, what's that? Like, what's a fan? So it's just, it's just interesting to see her, like, um, you know, growing and starting to become more aware. Like, like you know, she knows my name is Joey Badass. You know what I mean? You ask her, like, what's your daddy name? Like, she'll say my real name, but there's like, no, what's your daddy's other name? She's like, Joey Badass. Like, she understands all of that. So it's just, you know, it's dope to see her growing and um, coming into her awareness more and more. You know what I mean? Um, They don't teach meditation at school. I mean, you know, just this Western way of living is based upon us becoming workers. You know what I mean? Us working for the system. So like, I feel like meditation kind of goes against that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, through meditation, you learn to do things like think for yourself. You learn to do things like uh, tune out the world. You know what I'm saying? These are things that kind of goes against the system it is that they want us to live in. They don't want us to tune out the world. They want us to be plugged into the matrix every waking moment. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't want us to think for ourselves. They want to be able to think for us. So, um, you know, that's why, but I've, I have been seeing more of a trend, I wanna say, like of, you know, meditation being widely uh, discussed and even introduced. Like I had, I was reading one article and there's one school who adapted meditation as a detention, as a, like a detention service. So like any kids who go to detention, they would like have to meditate. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was dope. You know what I mean? That's like a dope way to, combat uh, conflict, you know what I'm saying, in schools and stuff like that. But um, yeah, you know, those are just the obvious reason. Shit, if, if, you're, if you're a deeply spiritual person, you have to find your tribe, you know what I'm saying? You gotta find people that you could connect with on that level. They might not be your friends, they might not be your family, it might be somebody on the internet. <laughs> you know what I mean? It might be somebody you meet on a forum or whatever, but it's very important to have um, peers, you know what I'm saying, as a spiritualist, I would say. I'm not sure if that's a word. But uh, it's very important because the spiritual arena is so massive, and you can easily get submerged, lost, lose yourself, you know what I mean? So you gotta have you gotta have some type of guidance. You gotta have some type of peers who could keep you afloat. You know what I'm saying? Like one thing you don't want to do is venture off too far into the waters 
of spirit where you drown, you become submerged into it. It's like, you know, nobody could relate to you. That's a scary place to be. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, you gotta have those people around you who's gonna keep you grounded. Cause that's what it is, it's like a hot air balloon, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the more you fill yourself with certain knowledge, it's like you get lighter and lighter and you start floating, you start flowing, but you gotta have those people who could bring you down every now and again, you know what I'm saying? So, like me, I have a, um, I've been blessed to have a therapist who's super into spirituality. So I never feel weird talking to him about my spiritual experiences, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it actually provides me with a great source to like connect with, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel crazy, I don't feel like I'm alone or anything, you know what I mean? So, yeah, shout out to my therapist, Dr. Siri. As I was answering the last question, it made me think about a line that's on this song that I have called Survivor's Guilt. The emotion, the feeling that I've been dealing with for years, you know, after, you know, the passing of Steez, you know, and um, I say a line in there where it's like, um, he was battling, he was dealing with, you know, mental health issues, but it's like, try to, try to tell that to the world back in 2012, you know? Like, he was suffering from mental health, try to t but try to talk about that back in 2012. But now that it's a mainstream topic, I'm guessing we could finally talk about it. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's, it's a very special song. Like, um, I didn't write it. Like, I, it came from my head, from my heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, the whole thing is just, it's, it's a very special song. You know what I mean? Like, um, I was even told by, like, a spirit guy that, like, he loves the song. You know what I'm saying? And there's no way for her to even knew that I wrote a song about it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's crazy shit, you know? The crazy thing is, bro, I make so much music nowadays that like I don't even stop to memorize it anymore. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just like I just go. Um, let me think. Oh yeah, this one. I bet. It's all gonna sound like, I used to think about killing myself until I started healing myself. I done changed a lot, but I still in myself. Now it's fuck all they feelings cause I'm feeling myself. I know they hating on the niggas, so my gun on my belt. Praying I don't get too triggered, so I'm moving with stealth. Same ones who try to take you out, be the ones that you help. I had to charge it to the game like it's just the cards I was dealt. But damn, learn to play my hand like it's the one I wanted. Every morning waking up, I'm grateful for abundance. Keeping a hundred out of May eight figures when you really summit. Not to mention I'm going on 10 summers. Still I get this feeling in the pit of my stomach. Knowing I still ain't manifest everything that I wanted. Sometimes the thought is hard to digest. Knowing I can't die yet. So I step down off the ledge and I digress. Something like that. <laughs> Wow, look at that, can't make that up. Barrington Levy is calling me. <laughs> Barrington Levy, like, that's crazy. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Yes, General. Wagwan King. Um, well, it's crazy, you know, because what I could say, from my perspective, it never feels as long. That, as it feels to the fans, because I'm actively in the studio. I'm actively thinking about uh, new music to make or actively creating new music. So it's like, you know, and I'm living with it. I'm going through phases with it. I'm uh, rethinking it. I'm recutting shit. I'm scrapping shit. My experience is, is entirely different, you know. <laughs> I see people, like, I see tweets or, you know, people tagging me and things all the time. It's like, yo, can you rap again? I miss when you rap. It's like, from my perspective, it's like, bro, I never stopped rapping. Like, you can ask anybody around me. Like, I'm in a really good space right now, too, like, as a rapper. And, and really what it is, it's like finding the right space or, like, the right phase or just, it's about confidence, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, some, I'm a perfectionist. I'm somebody who puts a lot into their work. And not only that, it's like, I know that the fans, my supporters, like, they expect 
highness of me. Like, if they didn't expect such high of me, I would have been put out music. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, okay, boom, I could, I could play around. But, like, it's going through those phases as well. It's like, damn, it's like realizing, like, you know, stepping back. Like, especially when I look at my last album, it's like that was such, to me, that was such a serious statement that I felt that I had to, I had to make at the time. And it's funny because even when I was making that album, there was another album that I was making simultaneously, and I had to come to a point, it was a crossroads, and I had to choose which path I wanted to go down. And I felt like I, I had to choose that one because it was like more of a spiritual calling, you know what I mean? I'm like, this is for my generation, like, this is not about me. This is for, you know, the people, this is like, this is education, this is for my generation, this is for the kids, you know what I'm saying? And to come off of that album is like a lot of pressure. Cause I put a lot into that, you know what I'm saying? I said a lot into like, I did actual research for that album. You know what I mean? Like now with this, I want to say on this side, like where my album is today is more personal. Like it's more about me. It's more about my world, like my experiences and less about like, you know, the macrocosm of, uh, racial injustice in America or just something that's more systematic, you know what I'm saying? This is more about my life and my experiences over the last couple of years or just my life in general, you know what I'm saying, from inception and things like that. So, um, you know, with that, when you're making such a personal album, I feel like we all go through so many phases. And it's like, when I first started this journey, it's, it's in a totally different place now. It's, it's, it's always interesting, just kind of riding the waves and the different vibrations, because what you want to do as an artist is choose the best of the best. You know what I mean? I want to choose the best of the hype, the best of the mellow, the best of the spiritual, the best of the personal, the best of the, you know, word. I don't think that the planet is sad. I think that the planet might be disappointed today. You know what I'm saying? More than it's sad. It might just be disappointed in us as a species, but it goes back to what I'm saying about abundance. It's like the planet is so abundant, there's no way it could be sad because it's still plentiful. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's still more blessings on the planet than there is stressings or whatever. Like, yeah, climate change is a huge problem, and I could see the planet frowning at that, but however, it's like, man, we got endless canyons and life. You know what I'm saying? Life is thriving on the macro and on the micro. There's fucking microbiomes in each one of us. And then just on the planet alone, so many tiny organisms we can't see. You know what I mean? So I think that the planet is still thriving. I think that the planet is still smiling. Um, you know, as far as it comes to the breath of the planet, it might be like a little bit congested. It's like y'all niggas smoking too much weed or some shit. Like you know what I mean? Or too much tobacco smoke. Like you know, he might the planet might have a little raspy voice from all the <laughs> pollution. But I think he's still smiling. She, he, she, whatever it is, you know, a non-binary. <laughs> I think it's still smiling for sure. They. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, I I believe, like, there's a reason why we've been oppressed. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why black people are picked on the way that they're picked on. There's a reason why there's a system implanted, implemented on black people to be a certain type of way. Because, you know, there is a great power that is in black people. And that is one of the main reasons why I did the voodoo ceremony in my video. Because even me, I came to learn that voodoo was not a bad thing. Like, I grew up with the white supremacist, spookism, seeds planted in my brain. Like, oh, voodoo was a bad thing, voodoo was evil. But the word voodoo alone means spirit. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't know that. And it's like, once, like, like that alone shifted my whole perspective on it. It's like, oh, wow, it means spirit. I'm a spiritual person, you know what I'm saying? So like, I started diving into it and it's like, spirit or magic or you know outer worldly interaction whatever you want to call it like i think that is a i've always gravitated to that phenomenon you know what i'm saying i've had experiences myself you know what i mean in in that space or whatever so i wanted to definitely shine a new light on it where you know black people especially can start to embrace their power. Because a lot of us, you know, that's part of this uh, 
diaspora, diaspora, however you say the word, a lot of us that's a part of that, we've been separated from our ancient cultures. You know what I mean? And a lot of our ancient cultures practice voodoo or practice magic or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think us getting back in tune with like who we actually are is like a big part of our evolution. You know what I'm saying? And even the world's evolution. Because, you know, if you got, if all of us ain't free, then none of us is free. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we not where we supposed to be. So like the closer we can get to that, I feel like the closer the world even gets to where it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that, oh, you know, black people are kings and shit like that. It should be royalty. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think everybody should be treated, <laughs> you know, especially or, or whatever the, the case it may be. But, um, you know, we all know that there's been a special type of uh, Just, uh, I'm blanking on the word, but like, you know, there's been a special type of shunning <laughs> on black people. You know what I'm saying? I experience it every day. Like, I just got pulled over by the cops on my way here. And it wasn't because of being black. It's because I made a wrong turn. But I feel like they gave me a ticket because I was black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, I didn't fucking see the sign. It's a left turn. It didn't hurt nobody. Now I got a summons. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck I got a summons for? Like, you know what I mean? It's a fucking turn. Like, so it was just, you know, shit like that. But, um, you know, I got faith. Like, I, I'd rather be, um, you know, optimistic. And um, I also understand my role in society, you know what I'm saying, in this world, in this generation. And, I, and I'm always going to use my platform to speak on these things. Like, we got to break out of the spookism, you know what I'm saying? Like, Will, there's, a, there's a Will Smith quote that I love. Like, I live by this shit. Like, God placed the best things in life on the opposite side of fear. You know what I mean? It's like, the more you lean into fear, the more you lean into unknown. It's like, the more you get in tune with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me even say this, right? Like, I'm going to crack the code for a lot of people. You know sleep paralysis? Sleep paralysis is something that I've been experiencing since a child. You know what I'm saying? And um, what I've come to figure out recently is like a lot of people on like the internet say, oh, it's like a demon is holding you down and shit like that. No, it's not that a demon is holding you down. It's that when you have sleep paralysis, you're in between a state where like reality and like almost a dream state. So pretty much that realm is controlled by your mind. And whatever it is that you believe, whatever principles it is that you've adapted, is going to affect your experience. Because it's natural. Once your mind wakes up and your body can't move, your brain automatically goes into a panic state. You can't, you can't change that. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is that a lot of us do the, like, like it's like fight or flight, fight or flight. Like a lot of us do the fucking uh, fight because of what we're told like oh shit like there's a demon some people like you know might even hallucinate like i've had hallucinations in that state too like you see things and she's like oh shit i fucking see an evil lady or whatever but that's all based upon your mental state like it's literally you versus you like a lot of people say oh you say jesus and like you break out no it's not that you said jesus it's just that you psyched yourself out when actually sleep paralysis is a gift because it is, it is literally the gateway to astral projection once you embrace the fact that, like, you know what I'm saying, you can't move or whatever, once you don't psych yourself out, you remain calm, you know what's the next level? You literally move out your body. You literally move out your body. You know what I'm saying? It's like, the government definitely don't want us to know that. <laughs> like, they don't, like, the government actually classifies astral projection as remote viewing. Because, literally, so once you're able to, like, in this realm, like, you see how we're all up and we're awake? You see how we walked into this building? Now that our consciousness is familiar with this space, we can revisit it as a ghost or as a spirit through, through astral projection. You, a great show to like see what I'm talking about is, is a show on Netflix called um, Behind Her Eyes. And it explains the whole astral projection thing very beautifully. Like, I've never seen a show that spoke so much for me on just this aspect. Because it's something that I've been experiencing since, since a child. But um, I've always been limited based on what 
I was taught, what belief systems I've adopted. And that's why I say the most beautiful things are on the opposite side of fear, embracing the unknown. You know what I'm saying? Because the more you lean into that, the more shit that you're able to see. Like, bro, I don't know about y'all, but I'm able to fly off my balcony as often as I want to and like go explore the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I've done it a few times and it's like, it's like a muscle. You, the more you practice it, the stronger you stronger you get. So to so all the kids out there, don't be afraid of sleep paralysis. If you're having that, you're actually gifted. You're actually blessed, you know what I'm saying? And you can do wonderful things in this world. Just don't adopt the fucking spookism that they've given us. Because a rightful king or queen must be able to travel between worlds or else you ain't shit, period. Surrender. Surrender. Like, there you go. Like, like, a great tool, like a great tool, once you're there and it's like you're scared or you're panicking, laugh. Yeah, exactly. Laugh in your head. Like laugh. At whatever you're seeing, laugh. I laugh at the fucking old bitch on the on the corner of the bed. Like, ah, ah you can't scare me. And then after that it's like the bitch poof, she's gone. And I'm like literally fucking climbing out of my body. And I'm like looking around my room and I'm in the astral realm. That's crazy, it's a beautiful thing. But that's like high level shit, you know what I'm saying? Only very few will understand. Even dreams, dreams are based on your subconscious. It's projections of your subconscious mind, you know what I'm saying? Like once you have more and more control over you, you know what I'm saying? You have the control to do what you need to do, you know what I'm saying, period. So. Just is a lot of adopted fear, bro. Like, and, and that goes back to why meditation is not allowed in schools. Because if meditation was allowed in schools, it would be way more fucking astral projectors and motherfuckers just in tune with their spirits and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, this is another reason why prayer is important. You know what I'm saying? Because through prayer, you build the aura around you. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of things that dirty up your aura. Like, lack of prayer, because la lack of prayer is a lack of awareness. Fucking drinking, smoking, shit like that put holes into your aura. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's important to take hiatuses and take breaks or pray before you go to sleep because you kind of just bless your surroundings a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You make yourself less susceptible to fucking... You know, just fucking bad shit. Bad thoughts is just bad energy in general, you know? And we all have them. And like, a big part of meditation is allowing yourself to think freely. No matter what thoughts come, just let them come and they flow out. That's how you get them out, you know what I'm saying? So, word up. <laughs> My message to the youth will be to stay true to yourself, um, you know? Don't be afraid to lean into your fears, into the unknown, because on the opposite side of that is the most beautiful things in life. You know what I'm saying? If uh, you're scared of ocean swimming, like I am, <laughs> go ocean swimming. You know what I mean? Like, I will conquer the ocean one day. I'm going to be a surfer. <laughs> when I'm 35, I'm going to be surfing and shit in Malibu. Right? But, um, yeah, you know. Man, just go for it. Just go for it, especially while you're young, you know? While you're still living underneath your parents' roof, that's where you have the most opportunity to fuck up, to have, make mistakes, get up, do it again. Man, go for it. Don't hesitate, you know what I'm saying? Don't hesitate. Get your head out of these devices and live life. Live your motherfucking life, you know what I'm saying? They say that you only live once, but that's wrong. You die once and you live every day. So live every day and make it count. Montreality show. Maybe me venting to you on this camera right now is what I need to make it to tomorrow. You ever thought about that? I don't got all the answers and um, no one does. But do we even need all the answers? We don't. You don't have to have it all figured out.